Claire Baker, founder of ClutterClearing.net and former Clutterholic. Uh, I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, it is the 28th of December today. You may have seen my video yesterday uh, about my own personal clutter clearing journey, my weight loss journey. Um, not such a great week, but hey, it's Christmas. Um, it was glorious sunshine here in Banbury in Oxfordshire in the UK yesterday. Today, oh, Everything outside is so crisp because uh, it has got such a hard frost on everything. It looks lovely, but it's cold. Uh, so I hope that you are uh, safe and warm wherever you may be. Uh, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, no doubt you've got glorious sunshine uh, rather than uh, deep winter like we have here. Anyway, uh, Christmas is kind of over now uh, and the next stop is the new year. So you might be thinking ahead to 2017. I don't know about you, but this year seems to have gone really fast uh, for me. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like uh, a year ago that it was Christmas uh, and that we were we were at this same stage, the, the, the looking ahead. This year uh, is actually the 17th anniversary of what I call my true turning point with my clutter clearing. I had tried many times uh, to clear my clutter before New Year's Eve 2000. Uh, I had made New Year's resolutions. This is going to be the year that I clear my clutter. And guess what? Each of those years I had failed. But that was because it wasn't actually my true turning point. My New Year's resolutions before the year uh, New Year's Eve 2000 were actually wishes. They weren't uh, founded on anything meaningful. But uh, Millennium New, Year Eve, New Year's Eve was different for me. It may have been different for you as well. It, it, it felt significant going into a new millennium. Uh, I was 27. Uh, I wasn't where I thought I was going to be in my life at that point. Uh, I had, I think, just assumed in my teens and my early 20s that that you know things would would happen i would meet somebody i would uh, have a career that i really enjoyed and and um, felt passionate about and i would have that dream world that dream life uh, that, that that i'd imagined in my teenage years and i wasn't at that point uh, on new year's eve on the on the millennium uh, and and i felt pretty down if i'm if i'm honest um, New Year's Eve can be a, a, a time, this time of year, can be quite a lonely time of year. Um, especially when we feel like we're not where we should be or thought we would be in life. Uh, now, you get to a certain age and you realise that life rarely <laughs> turns out the way you planned or thought it would. Um, and I think the key thing for me that was at millennium uh, New Year's Eve, I realised, you know what, this isn't just going to happen. This isn't just going to fall on my plate. I'm not going to wake up one morning and the clutter will magically uh, have disappeared. Uh, even if I pay somebody to come in and deal with it for me, if I don't get back control of it, if I don't learn the actions of, uh, that I need to do in order to, to control and maintain it and clear it, then then this is just going to be uh, like Groundhog Day. <laughs> you may feel that way about your clutter already, that hang on a minute, I've been here so many times before wanting to clear it and I just seem to end up back at square one. That's how I felt uh, on Millennium Eve uh, for 2000. Um, but the, the, the true turning point, the true change, the sh true shift, if you like, that happened to me was that I realised that it needed to come from me and my sense of purpose shifted. No longer was it a wish, no longer was it I'd like to have a clutter-free home, I'd like this uh, this, this uh, three-bedroomed house that I have uh, to look lovely and for me to be entertaining and, and, and being the social butterfly uh, that I feel that I should be. Remember, of course, that just because you clear your clutter does not mean that you have to share your home with anybody. This is a big uh, um, uh, realisation for a lot of people. Sometimes the clutter is there because it actually helps protect us from, uh, from the outside world. It enables us to have a space that we can call our own, not invite other people into. 
just because you clear it doesn't mean you have to share that space with anybody. You can still choose to leave the world outside and to have that safe space that is just yours. The shift for me um, was realising that actually the benefits of clearing my clutter go beyond having a clutter-free home. 27, single, not only, only, only one serious relationship, uh, uh, um, uh, romantic relationship in my life, uh, uh, which hadn't gone well. Uh, and I really wanted to share my life with somebody and share my home. And the clutter was getting in the way, not just physically, but mentally, because it was mental clutter as well. Um, so suddenly the, 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 the purpose, the, the, the drive, if you like, uh, to do my clutter clearing shifted on Millennium Eve uh, 2000. I call it my true turning point because of five things that shifted. No longer was I going to just have a blitz. No longer was I just going to weed out where I know can, gr can go. Uh, I was no longer going to move it from corner to corner, room to room. I was no longer going to buy storage solutions thinking that that would magically hide it. There's no such thing as a TARDIS. If, 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 you, if you've ever uh, heard of Doctor Who, you'll know that he has a telephone box, a blue telephone box, and he walks through the door and there's magically loads of space uh, inside, even though on the outside it just looks like a small telephone box. There's no such thing. That's all in fantasy world. Uh, and it's the same with our clutter. No storage solution is going to hide our clutter. There is, an, there is a finite amount of space in your home and therefore storage is, is not going to make a difference. So these five things made a difference, uh, were the things that were going to make the difference because I was no longer uh, just playing at it um, and, and blaming the clutter for everything. So what are the five things? Let me share those with you. The first thing uh, that was a factor in my true turning point that I finally realised that I needed to make time. Make time. And not just make time to do my clutter clearing. I needed to protect it. Protect. I was really good at making time. I loved planning out my time, putting schedules together. Um, I was a project manager in my professional trade uh, at that time. Um, and and uh, so making time, making plans, I excelled in that but I was never very good at sticking to it when it came to me and my own time. Protecting it was really, really important. Um, even more so in this, this day and age. I, in a way, I suppose I was lucky back then. Mobile phones were not uh, as widespread, I suppose, as they are today. Uh, you know, computers were not as prolific, really, uh, or as widely used or as, as, as uh, daily essential as they are uh, today. Protecting it... Uh, means turning off your mobile phones while you are spending your time doing your clutter clearing. Uh, it means not uh, allowing friends uh, or family to sabotage you unknowingly uh, by suggesting, oh, should we do this? Should we do that? I appreciate a lot of shame can come with making time and protecting it for doing your clutter clearing because we don't want to say to, to friends and family, actually, I can't do that because I am doing my clutter clearing, especially if they know that our, our clutter has been a challenge for a while. Um, I have a lot of clients and members who actually say that they are just doing an online course uh, and they will say that it's something related uh, to, to, to um, either their clutter or a hobby that their friends and family know that they've got. And so they say, I'm not available for, for a, a couple of hours because I am doing my online course perfectly fine we don't have to explain it anyway um, but protecting our time is as important as making the time so I decided that I was going to do that I actually took my clutter clearing uh, as a um, as a um, like a research project because I had to figure out how to clear my clutter first you're lucky you don't need to do that uh, but uh, I had to figure out the process, the method that was going to work first. Um, so I actually treated it like a part-time uh, job. 
um, and and again people didn't question it when when uh, when I said that I was actually doing a, a research project uh, and therefore I wasn't contactable so making time was the first thing that, that really mattered the next thing the next thing I needed to do uh, was to actually do a little at a time a little at a time Hands up who has tried to clear their clutter and said, right, I'm going to spend all day doing it uh, or all weekend or I'm going to start and keep going till I've finished. I did that a lot. <laughs> I ran out of time. I ran out of energy. I ran out of the will to live. I even took time off work. I used annual leave uh, to do my uh, uh, or try to do my decluttering. And guess what? It didn't work. I learned and realised that actually doing a little at a time is much better not just for the energy not just for the will to live but when you're actually doing your clutter clearing and making decisions about the things in your clutter it is much more mentally and physically tiring than you think once we start using this muscle uh, and, and it starts to get a workout it gets a bit tired so actually doing a little at a time was re were, was a significant point uh, when I reached my true turning point because we're going to have to sustain this for a while. We're not going to clear our clutter overnight. It didn't appear overnight. It's not going to disappear overnight. So again, doing a little and often and, and, and a little at a time meant that it didn't feel as much as a chore. It does feel like a chore. It gets pretty boring uh, if we're brutally honest about it because we're going through stuff that we've probably gone through uh, many times before but we're going through it differently this time but realizing that a little at a time that helped me with my true turning point uh, the third thing that contributed if you like to my my true turning point uh, was realizing that I needed to learn from my mistakes learn This applied not only at the beginning of my clutter clearing journey, but while I was on my clutter clearing journey. You are not going to start your clutter clearing journey and have it all go perfectly and smoothly. Even when you know the clutter clearing process and how it works, you will make mistakes. And guess what? That's OK. As Albert Einstein said, and this is a quote I use quite often, insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. It doesn't work that way, does it? We need to actually make mistakes in order to learn. Many, many discoveries uh, in, in science and life have been from mistakes. Uh, if you think about me with my clutter clearing, I had my clutter, which you could say was a mistake. It was the result of, of, of consistent mistakes um, but actually I've learned from that and guess what now I, I help other people clear their clutter now I would have never imagined that I was doing that uh, you know 15 years ago so we learn from our mistakes and that's the best way to learn and it actually creates the best outcome I actually am pleased when my clients and members make mistakes uh, and when they ask me Claire hang on a minute I, I, I don't know what I'm doing or oh what should I do or, you, you know it's good. I get worried when people don't ask questions uh, and don't have challenges because it's the best thing. When I was at school, I remember there were there were uh, students who were just really good, always A grade students, and and I struggled. I was kind of a, a mid range student, um, but actually, you know what? I think I learned more, and I and I really got proper learning. Uh, because I made mistakes, because I didn't always get it right, didn't because I didn't get A A A grades all the time. Um, so actually, it's really important. If you've got children, I'm sure that you tell your children that actually it's OK to make mistakes as long as we learn from them. It's when we keep making the same mistake over and over again that that we need to, to, to sort of sit up and wait, re realise what we're doing wrong. I did that. I, the, I'd done the blitzes so many times. I'd uh, got a skip a couple of times. I had moved the clutter thousands of times and I had weeded through the clutter thousands of times. I learned, guess what, that doesn't work. Weeding, piling, blitzing, moving, that's a mistake. And I learned from it. Uh, so again, that, that was important. The fourth factor that helped me reach my true turning point uh, was actually not having 
a deadline. No deadline. Oh, once you take away that deadline and say, I have to do this by the end of the month, I have to do this by Easter, I have to do this by the summer. When we're doing a little at a time, as long as we are doing a little at a time, by making time and protecting that time and learning from the mistakes when we do a little at a time, suddenly you will start to see progress. You will probably see more progress uh, than if you set yourself a deadline. All that does is increase the anxiety and increase the pressure, increase the expectation. Take away the deadline and things will suddenly start to work. Um, I've done this myself with my own personal clutter clearing journey over the last year, slightly more, uh, with my weight loss clutter clearing journey. I have no deadline. I know I will get there. And as long as I am consistent, as long as I am learning from my mistakes, Christmas wasn't a mistake. Um, I just ate things that are not part of my normal uh, um, uh, food plan. Um, I'm doing a little at a time. I'm losing... Uh, two or three pounds a week and therefore I'm getting there and I'm making time to do the exercise and I'm protecting that exercise. I used to work five evenings a week because of clients in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, mornings and evenings, all my time spent working and it's I'm lucky I love my job. But once I started to protect, make, protect my time and make time three times a week to go to the gym, guess what? Start to see results. Um, but I have no deadline for when I have to have to uh, um, uh, lose the weight by because this is a one way journey. I am not going to go back to where I was. So as long as I am doing all of this and maintaining uh, and, and uh, making a change for life, I don't need a deadline. OK, um, so that took away a lot of the pressure uh, in, two, in uh, New Year's Eve 2000 for me uh, when I was trying to clear my clutter. And then the fifth and final factor, uh, if you like, that, that, that contributed to my, me reaching my true turning point uh, was understanding the clutter. Understand uh, the clutter. Again, I know that there is a pressure on ourselves to just clear it as quickly as possible. But you know what? If there was a quick fix, you'd have found it by now. You would have cleared your clutter. You would not be watching this video. If we understand the clutter and where it comes from, if we understand why we have our clutter, uh, if we understand what's in our clutter, if we have some basic knowledge and understanding, it's really going to help us want to make the time, want to protect it, do a little bit at a time. Like I say, it's a men it is a mental and physical workout when you are properly clearing your clutter. So we, we, we must just do a little and often. When we learn from our mistakes, we will understand the clutter much better. And when we don't have a deadline, we can understand and learn what we need to learn. Our journeys are all very slightly different or, or are all slightly different. We all start off with a different amount of clutter. We all uh, have different things in our clutter. We all have different priorities. We have different size homes. Uh, we have different decisions that we make. But as long as we understand the clutter and how to clear it, of course, uh, then we will have reached that true turning point of actually, you know what? I'm ready to clear my clutter, okay? So you may recognize some of those things. Maybe some of those things uh, have been missing in the past uh, when you've decided that, that, that you want to clear your clutter or made a new year's resolution uh, to clear your clutter. These are not the same as the success factors. I will share with those with you uh, in a future video. Now, once I had kind of realized these five things uh, and reached my true turning point uh, millennium new year's eve it then took me a year to work out how to clear your clutter how do you actually successfully clear your clutter so that you uh, have a, a, a home that that uh, you can be proud of um, how do you actually make decisions safely Keep Chuck Charity wasn't working. Uh, blitzing wasn't working. Weeding out what I knew could go wasn't wor working. 
took me a whole year uh, to work out, to discover uh, how to do that. Like I said earlier, you're lucky in that you don't actually need uh, need that year. I've worked it out for you already. So, have you reached your true turning point in terms of your clutter? Are you ready to make the time and protect it? In terms of how much time, I encourage people to make two lots of two hours every week as a starting point. They don't have to be together. Uh, in, so it might be two hours on a Tuesday, two hours on a Thursday, or two hours on a Monday, two hours on a Thursday. As long as you can find two slots of two hours that you can then protect, uh, then that, that is uh, a sufficient time to get started. Are you prepared to do a little at a time? Are you prepared to give up the blitzes? Are you ready to learn from your mistakes? You've already made mistakes. Uh, with your clutter that's why you have it are you prepared to look at them and learn from them are you prepared to give up the idea of a deadline and just say to yourself by this time next year I want to have less clutter more space in my home and are you ready to understand the clutter if that's if, if all of those five things apply then that's great 2017 uh, can be the year when you succeed at clearing your clutter. We do also need to make sure that it is a priority. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, share with you an exercise. Uh, so you join in, piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. Uh, I'm going to share with you an exercise which will help you figure out whether or not clearing your clutter is actually a priority. Because although you may have reached your true turning point, we just need to check that it's not going to be at the expense of something else in our lives. Because if we throw ourselves into clutter clearing, although we're not going to because we're only gonna do a little at a time, but if we make time and protect it for our clutter clearing, we wanna make sure that's not at the expense uh, of another area of our lives. Good, I hope that was helpful. If you are, uh, if you already know you're at a point where clearing your clutter is a priority in 2017, gosh, 2017, um, then you need to know that on Sunday, the 1st of January, I am doing a live clutter clearing session by a video link um, for all clutter community members. All clutter community members get access to one live clutter clearing session with me every month, the first Thursday of every month. But I'm doing an extra one on, the, on Sunday, the 1st of January. So, if you become a Clutter Community member, not only will you get access to that four hour live clutter clearing session on Sunday, you will also get access to a live four hour clutter clearing session on Thursday, the 5th of January. That will help you get off to a really good start. But not just that, you will also get uh, as a welcome gift uh, the clutter clearing DIY kit as I call it which is uh, the two workbooks which have got the clutter clearing process in we use these during our clutter clearing sessions so they will be particularly useful you probably won't get you won't get them in time for the the, the session on the 1st of January or the 5th of January but these will arrive uh, with you uh, uh, during January and a set of clutter clearing category cards. These are essential to help you uh, uh, decide what to do with your clutter. These are the, 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 the magic uh, clutter clearing category cards. So if you become a clutter community member before Sunday the 1st of January, not only will you get this in uh, the post, uh, which is worth 75 pounds, uh, which I think is about $95 at the moment, uh, you will also get access to a four hour live clutter clearing session with me on Sunday, the 1st of January and a four hour live clutter clearing session on Thursday, the 5th of January. If you want to find out the times and the details, there is a link below. Click on that uh, and you will be able to see all of the details uh, and to become a clutter community member, to join me so that you can start 2017 uh, with your clutter clearing journey well and truly uh, kicked off because you'll be able to ask me questions and queries. I'll guide you through the clutter clearing process uh, in those two live sessions uh, and we'll make sure uh, that we do a little on, on Sunday, a little on Thursday, we'll, you will make time. We'll be able to learn from your mistakes in those live sessions. 
we're not putting a deadline we're just doing two clutter clearing sessions uh, and I will be able to uh, share with you and so that you understand your clutter a bit better uh, lovely to see you. I will send you, like I say, uh, another video tomorrow uh, where we, we just check that clearing our clutter is a priority. Uh, but in the, thank, in the meantime, thank you for watching and I shall see you very soon. Take care.